Hello and welcome to this Filbert Flies review of Orbex's Sandefjord Torp Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You join me on approach to runway 36 and I'm starting with an approach as always to give you a look at the surrounding area which as you can see is absolutely stunning and the opportunity to gauge the performance of the add-on on my system. You can find my system specs and graphics settings in the video description down below. I'll let you watch the approach and landing in peace and I'll speak to you again once we're parked up at a gate. From there we'll have a look around the airport in different weather and lighting conditions and I'll finish up by giving you my overall opinion on it. Welcome to Sandefjord, we're parked up here on Stand 15. As you can see there are no jetways at this airport and unfortunately we don't have many ground services available. So we can call for a fuel truck and we can do a pushback uh, but unfortunately there are no air stairs, there's no baggage and there are no catering vehicles available. Let's move on to having a look at the terminal building. Small but perfectly formed I would say. So the quality of the modelling is very, very good. Uh, there's a nice amount of detail on the roof, as you can see. We've got a nice 3D sign, and the texture work is really pretty impressive too. The roof textures are plenty high enough resolution for me, uh, and they've got a good amount of weathering and detail on them. We've also got some nice details included, like these air conditioning units over here. Moving back down, we'll have a little look at the exterior texturing. So I'm very impressed by the quality of the textures on the canopies and uh, the signage on the glass windows is very crisp as well, as you can see. We've got some nice weathered concrete textures around and about the place and overall the standard is very high. And of course you will have noticed by now that we have tinted transparent glass, so let's pop in and take a little look at the modelled interiors. So it's really nice to see some people in here and we also have some really nice looking weathered benches in this cafeteria area. The ground textures and ceiling textures are not the highest resolution but when viewed from outside they look absolutely fantastic and they look way above average from the inside as well. Going downstairs you'll notice we've got more people around the gate areas. Some really nice texturing on this uh, well, whatever it is here. What would you call this? A freeze, I suppose. <laughs> That's been done to a very high standard indeed. And some more signage, which is lower resolution than what we saw outside, as you would expect. But the whole airport looks really nice from the inside, and the amount of interior modelling is very impressive. 
There are a lot of really nicely modelled peripheral buildings included with this scenery. This Vidaro hangar, for example, is absolutely spectacular. We've got a lovely curved roof without too many obvious jagged edges, some really nice weathered and crisp textures on the outside, and some really nice details like these flood lamps. You'll notice that there is a light covering of snow on the roof, and that's because I am using live weather today for this review. I don't normally, I just fancied a little bit of a change, and this airport looks great with a little bit of snow on it. The control tower looks great as well. We've got some tinted transparent glass, no modelled interior, but who's really that bothered about that? Not me. Um, and the textures on the outside look absolutely fantastic. Really nicely weathered concrete, some very well modelled uh, railings around the outside here. Uh, so yes, very impressive. Most of the other buildings at the airport don't have transparent windows or modelled interiors, but the opaque window textures in use generally are very high quality. They're nice and crisp and they look pretty realistic. There are one or two exceptions. This building here has some quite repetitive window textures, uh, which don't quite look as convincing as uh, some of the other buildings. But nonetheless, this is a long way away from the airport. You won't see this up close in day-to-day -day operations, and it looks pretty reasonable. In fact, I'd say that the less than perfect window textures are made up for by the impressive architecture and the impressive modeling of that architecture. Something I've never mentioned in a review before, but is definitely worth pointing out here, is uh, rock quality. So this airport has obviously been levelled, and uh, there are a number of sheer rock faces around the edge of the apron. And these look incredibly realistic to me, very lifelike. Uh, so that's really nice to see. The airport fire station has been nicely modelled, and we've got some pretty good looking fire engines parked out the front of it. As well as the fire engines and the usual ground clutter, which is plentiful, we have these rather interesting vehicles parked up here. Now, obviously, these are used for snow ploughing, uh, hence the snow ploughs on the front. But I'm not entirely sure what all of the equipment on the back is. It's, uh, it's intriguing. If anyone knows, do let me know in the comments. Anyway, these are very nicely modelled and the textures are crisp as well, so they look really good. Orbex have included a number of static aircraft models and they all look really good. So we have these military aircraft parked up at the top here. Some small GA aircraft on the general aviation apron. A Vidaro turboprop inside this beautifully modelled hangar and one parked outside here. And a Ryanair 737 and another Vidaro turboprop parked outside the terminal. I've turned off the live weather now to get rid of the snow so that we can have a good look at the ground textures and markings. I would overall describe these as very good. If you look at the Google and Bing satellite imagery, and why would you unless you're reviewing the airport, you'll notice that the choice of materials and their colours is not super accurate. So these what appear to be concrete blocks making up the bulk of the apron surface don't exist at the real airport, so it's a slightly odd choice to put them here. But, in my opinion, that's made up for by the general resolution and quality. So you'll notice we've got some good rubber marking here, we've got some repairs in the taxiways, and everything is pretty high resolution. The ground markings look great as well. They are 100% accurate from what I can see. And uh, the yellow is just about right, it's not too bright and gaudy. So overall, I'm impressed. The grassy areas look very nice, and the transition between the grass and the taxiway edge is nice and crisp. The 3D modelled taxiway signs also look good, and they are very clear and easy to read.
The runway looks pretty nice in the sense that it's got nice crisp textures, it's got some repairs, it's got some rubber marking around the touchdown zone, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't bear much of a resemblance to the real runway. And the main reason for this is that the real runway has yellow runway markings and this has white as you can see. Now I suspect that this is a limitation of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm sure if it was possible Orbex would have put the yellow runway markings in. But this isn't the only problem. The materials used don't match and the colours don't match either. So it's down to you how much of an impact that will have on your enjoyment of the scenery. Personally, I don't think it matters that much. When I'm flying in here, I'm not going to be remembering what the Google satellite image looked like. But there you are, worth pointing out for those of you who are keen on having super accurate runways. The landside areas of this airport have been beautifully modelled. We've got really crisp textures both on the ground and on the exterior of the buildings. We've got some really nice details like buses and cars and uh, benches out the front of the airport and it feels very lifelike indeed. Here's Sandefjord by night, and the night lighting is pretty good. The floodlights look fantastic, the glow they create over the apron looks pretty good. Perhaps it could do with a little bit of brightening up, I'm not 100% sure, it looks a little bit dim to me, but you know, that really is nitpicking. And the interior of the terminal looks fantastic by night. Often with glass, particularly with tinted glass, the terminals look either too light or too dark, but this to me looks just right. If you go inside, the interior lighting also looks pretty good and the view from the windows is very impressive, even though they do lose their tint from within. Annoyingly, there are one or two floating orbs courtesy of a Sobo and I don't think developers can do anything about these, but they don't detract from the experience very much. And the taxiway and runway lighting both look very nice indeed. The ground textures look very nice when they're wet, but we do have the usual popping of the glass windows when they should be shrouded in mist. Uh, this is not something that developers have any control over, but I hope it's something that a Sobo fix fairly soon. And here's Sandefjord in the snow. And I have to say, within the limits of what the sim can do, I think that Orbex have done a really good job here. I like this uh, scattered snow effect over the apron looks pretty realistic. I like the way that the taxiways and the runway have been kept clear of snow, although if you increase the snow depth they will end up with a covering. And although we have some sharp lines between the grassy areas and the taxiways and the runway, overall it's pretty impressive. So what do I think of Orbex's Sandefjord? Well I think it's brilliant. My biggest complaint was the accuracy of the runway textures and, as I said, I suspect that the sim limits how much developers can do about these, particularly when it comes to the colour of the markings. Other than that, every aspect of the scenery is superb and very, very detailed. The modelling and texturing of the buildings is first class. The terraforming and the rock faces are very impressive. The interior modelling is great and so are the landside areas. I love the quality and quantity of ground clutter and the static aircraft are done to a very high standard too. All of this combines to create a very realistic atmosphere and an airport that I have no hesitation at all in recommending. Thank you very much for watching. Do please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of thing, as well as regular live streams, tutorials, product previews and more. I hope to see you again soon here on Filbert Flies. Bye bye.